Never met an underwater archaeologist. That's right. Tamara Thompson is also a shipwreck conservatist, conser conservationist, right? <laughs> Instructor and a member of the Women Divers Hall of Fame. And she has spent much of her time in Lake Michigan exploring Wisconsin shipwrecks. That conservationist, that's like what a, a $15 <laughs> word in yes. whatever game. All right, Tamara is in Milwaukee now because she is part of the Wisconsin History Tour and is speaking at the Central Library tomorrow. Her talk is actually based on this book, Great Ship on the Great Lakes where she took part she took actually many of the photos which is fantastic great to meet thanks you for being thanks here. for having me it's <laughs> a wonderful so you spend a lot of time under way underwater like deep right yeah, not this time of year it's a little bit too cold for that right but, uh, but certainly in this in the summertime we spend a good amount of time looking at the shipwrecks cataloging mm -hmm. them for the state so it's neat I've heard a lot about the shipwrecks here in Milwaukee and how cool they are and some of them that you can even see from shore you oh, know where, where a lot yeah. of them are and and people do they take lessons mm -hmm. to be able to go down there what what specifically do you do as an archaeologist so underwater what we do is we catalog the shipwrecks of the state of Wisconsin so there's 750 historic losses so we know based on newspaper reports and historic documents that uh, these ships are lost somewhere in Wisconsin waters and 750 so I know it's a it's a it's That's an extraordinary number so but of those we've only we've only discovered about 170 of them really? so I don't go and look for them other people huh. find them but but our job really is to catalog what's down there so that we have an accurate understanding of what are these resources that are state owned. See, I'm never lucky <laughs> enough at a cocktail party to run into yeah. someone like you. <laughs> I run into the people who go on and on about like <laughs> their kids or themselves <laughs> or something. But this is fascinating, I think. A lot of people are familiar with the very famous Edmund Fitzgerald mm -hmm. and they yep. talk about it being off the coast of Whitefish Bay. It is. What's the status of that ship? Is that part, have you ever taken? Well, it, you know, it's a, it's a very famous uh, shipwreck. It was home ported here in Milwaukee, so it does have a connection locally, but it's in Canadian waters. So that's not mm -hmm. really within the realm of what we catalog and study, but it's protected by, uh, by the Canadian government and under their laws. Okay. It's what's in about 500 or so feet of water. Okay. Wow. <laughs> what's one in Milwaukee that you've uh, explored and found things out about? Because I've heard mm -hmm. even things like, if, you know, if there's a boot or something on <laughs> yeah. the ship, you can't take it. It's, right. it's part of the property and you have to to leave it right yeah it, it, there's a there's a law that was set up in 1987 that protects all resources mm -hmm. that are on the bottom land and those are property of the state so um, it's actually better we find for tourism if there's more things on the wreck so uh, mm. we encourage people to leave them um, not only is it against the law but it, pr it makes for better tourism and more people come in and visit our shipwrecks That's neat. so uh, yeah we've we've looked at a number of shipwrecks and uh, we've had projects on a number of them off of Milwaukee. So cool. What are some of the most fascinating to you or interesting things <laughs> you found underwater in these shipwrecks? <laughs> well, um, the most interesting thing that I found is is pretty um, inconsequential. It's a uh, there's uh, always this story that when they're building ships on the uh, on the last day when they're raising the mast, they would take a coin from the year that the ship was constructed and they would put it into the main mast step oh. and then they would step the mast. And so um, you hear hear these stories of you know historic ship construction but I never expected to see one and um, we were diving off of Door County and um, we we came and uh, there were a bunch of coins and other things that were there that I was cleaning up in the area and I came across one of these masked up coins and so because of that we were able to identify the name of the particular ship huh. um, that we were working on and surveying as well so. as clearly the year oh yeah you, absolutely that was, that was the way that we were able to identify it because we knew based on newspaper reports a number of ships that were about the same size and build that were in the same were in the area but we weren't able to narrow it down to a name because a lot of times the ships don't have a name board that's on them that says this is you know this particular ship or whatever yeah. um, so a lot of them you're really ba looking at construction details it's so cool I've got to ask and maybe this is <laughs> I don't know a bad question to ask but have you ever seen skeletons <laughs> yeah unfortunately a really? lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, vessels that are on our bottom lands are our grave sites yeah. and so you need to be 
be very respectful of, of the human remains that are down that there. there. You do. You leave really? everything there that's in place. It's it's someone's grave site. You know, yeah. you don't want to disturb it. Mm -hmm. And huh. um, and so yeah, you, you're very very hands off, very very respectful of it. And um, we keep a catalog of, of those reports. And wow. what's the what's the the thought as to why I think weather comes to mind? But why do so <laughs> many of these ships wreck? In your opinion? <laughs> well, you know, there's a number of reasons that they wreck. But uh, I think the larger question is why are they here? Why do we have so many in Wisconsin? And yeah. it's really because you know I, I, before there were roads, before there were trains, the Great Lakes were this um, this major highway. It was a water highway, and it connected us to the East Coast. And so we have a lot of those ships that are coming into major ports like Milwaukee or Chicago that were coming in and bringing coal to industrialize the cities. But then our grain, because uh, of all this grain production um, in the heartland, was being shipped out of here as well. Mm. And so you know we have those type of ships, but we also have a lot of immigrant ships, people who are coming here, um, and unfortunately, they, they didn't quite make it to their final destination. So there's a number of those in Wisconsin waters as well. You are fascinating. fascinating. It's so true. Here's how you can meet Tamara. Uh, it's coming up. It's Tamara Thompson. Uh, we have that wrong there. It's Friday, January 23rd at noon at the Milwaukee Central Library. That's where you can meet her and learn the history beneath the waters and the waves. For a full list of events, uh, the Wisconsin History Tour, you can visit them online at Wisconsin History tour.org fascinating let's go for drinks right? yeah absolutely see you can hold your breath longest <laughs> <laughs> go all right okay. that's awesome <laughs> she gets oxygen though she might have wrapped all her breath great Thanks, to meet Tamara. you thank, thank you, you for so having much. me appreciate it